All right, Econ 180 folks, welcome back to some urban economics. Um, what I wanted to do in this video was go over briefly um, one of the problems that's going to be on the upcoming homework assignment, homework number four. Um, this is question or exercise 9.1 in the textbook. That's on page um, 267. Mm -mm, can't see that, can you? All right. Um, I will screenshot the pages from the homework assignment um, and post them up for you guys. Um, but basically this question looks at um, pollution and um, some of the solutions associated with it. So we're going to suppose that there are two polluting factories surrounded by identical residential neighborhoods. Uh, the marginal damage curves are identical for the two neighborhoods um, given by, so let's put this up there. We're going to have the marginal damage curves for the two neighborhoods be given by MD1 equal to P and MD2 equal to P. And so what we're going to do here is use um, the information in the problems to basically derive the marginal damage and marginal benefit curves um, for these two communities um, where P is the level of pollution. So MD equal, the marginal damage is equal to the level of pollution. The marginal damage benefit curves, or the marginal benefit curves for the factories are different. The marginal benefit for the first factory is going to be MD1 is equal to 8 minus P, and the marginal damage for the second neighborhood, um, where the factory has a cleaning, cleaner production process, is going to be marginal benefit 2 is equal to 4 minus P. And so um, both curves become 0 once they hit the horizontal axis. There's no negative marginal benefit. So what we're going to do first is draw or illustrate the curves for the two neighborhoods in diagrams and identify the pollution levels chosen by the firm in the absence of government intervention. So that's going to be that P bar, which is the maximum level of government uh, of pollution and that'll be our first part and then we'll find the social surplus achieved in that case. So let's take a look at what that means. The first thing we want to do is we'll go to our first community and derive the maximum level of pollution. So the pollution level at which the marginal benefit is zero. So if you remember sort of briefly I'll sketch the um, curves up here, what they would look like, right? We have some world where there's some level of pollution and some cost associated with it. The marginal benefit curve is downward sloping. Um, as the level of pollution increases, the benefit or the cost of reducing that pollution um, decreases, and the marginal damage curve for the neighborhood is upward sloping, and that's based on the idea that small levels of pollution cause a small level of harm, higher levels of pollution cause higher levels of harm. So if we want to find that P bar here, we need to solve for um, MB1 equal to 0, which means we're going to set 0 over here equal to 8 minus P, and that will give us our level of P bar, the level at which um, there's no more incentive to pollute. There's no more benefit to additional pollution. So um, that's just going to give us, um, if we subtract P or add P to both sides, we just get P equal to 8. So our P bar is going to be 8 in our first community. And do the same thing over here. The marginal benefit um, set it equal to 0, 4 minus P add P to both sides, we get P equals 4. So um, the P bar level for community 2 is going to be equal to 4. So far so good, right? Um, the next thing we want to do is um, draw the curves for this, these two communities. So I'm going to go ahead and find the, um, so let's go ahead and put that together. Okay. So we have two communities. Um, and the, 
other thing I want to find is the um, intercept over here on the cost side. So I know I'm going to have curves in P and dollar sign space. P bar is going to be equal to 8. So if I draw my marginal benefit curve, that's going to be at a value of 8. Um, I also want to know the value of pollution if pollution is set to zero. So to that, for that one, I'll just solve the equation. Um, I'll just set MB equal to, or I'll set um, T equal to zero. So I want to know what MB1 is when P is zero right here. So that's just going to be MB1 equals eight minus zero. That's kind of low for you guys, huh? That's better. So that's just going to be 8 minus 0 or 8. So far so good. So far pretty straightforward, right? Um, on the other hand, MD is going to be equal to T, so it's going to come straight out of the origin at a 45 degree angle. That's going to be my marginal damage curve and my marginal benefit curve. Cool. I can do the same thing over here where my community two, what do we call these? We call these neighborhoods. And I'm going to derive the same things the same way. So uh, the first thing I want to find, I want to find my two end, point, end points. So I want to set MB equal to zero. And so I'm going to say zero equals four minus P, add P to both sides, and I get four. Um, let's make neighborhood two be green. No, let's keep blue. Okay. The other thing I want to find is the end point over here. So I'm going to set P equal to zero and B equals four minus zero. That's also going to be four. These are pretty symmetrical equations, right? That's going to be my level of P. So far, so good, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, part B says find the socially optimal pollution levels in the two neighborhoods and talk about why they are different. So that means now I want to find P1 star and P2 star. And that's going to be just those two social optimums. Um, so to do that, I just set marginal damage equal to marginal benefit. So if marginal damage is P, so marginal damage is equal to P and marginal benefit is equal to 8 minus P. That means I'm looking at P equals 8 minus P, which I can then solve, uh, add P to both sides and I get 2P equals 8, um, which then I can divide both sides by 2 and I get P equals 8 divided by 2 or 4. So, in this case, P star is going to be 4. Cool. Super straightforward, right? All right, so let's throw that in here. Uh, same thing over here. If I want to find P2 star, it's going to be P two star is going to be where marginal damage is equal to marginal benefit, which means P equal to four minus P or two P oops, is equal to four. P is equal to four divided by two, which means P is equal to two. 
Super easy. Easiest math you've ever done, right? Oh, sorry. Oh, there's a little glare there. It's kind of better. All right. Try not to use that part of the graph. So now my P star is 2. Cool beans. It's kind of kind of legible. The other part we want to talk about that we haven't talked about that um, the question asked us is the social surplus achieved in the case. And basically, basically what we want to look at is how well is society in the initial condition where we're living with a pollution level P bar and how well is society going to be if we reduce that pollution. So to do that what we have to do is we have to determine the level of social surplus. And so for us the social welfare in each neighborhood is going to be equal to the total marginal benefit of pollution minus the total marginal damage. And so what we're really talking about, and I'm going to kind of ruin my graphs. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm going to do a new graph. Um, what we're talking about here is we're talking about measuring the effect of pollution so that we can talk about what happens when we fix it. So if we've got our marginal benefit curve and our marginal damage curve, and we've got our level P bar, like so, um, what we want to look at is the benefit to the firm of polluting and not having to reduce their costs. So that's going to be this benefit to society here. And then we want to compare that to the area that represents the cost to society of this, the damage to the neighborhood. And that's going to be this area here, right? And so that's going to be the total benefit to society at pollution level P bar, the benefit to the firm minus the cost to the neighborhood. So we're going to calculate basically the area of two triangles and subtract the damage from the benefit. Does that make sense? Um, in the book, they talk about it like being, um, you know, see if we put in our socially optimal level P star um, it talks about it being you know area A area B area C and area D and so um, that's another way of looking at it so what's the value of areas A B and C minus the value of areas B C and D and you can kind of predict based on the way that this is um, derived is that these are going to be pretty symmetric, right? Make sense? Sorry, I know it's a little choppy. I'm trying to cut the glare over there so you can actually see the whole board. Okay, so let's find the area of these two triangles. Cool. Um, I'm going to use my green pen for this. So in neighborhood one, the value of the margin. Oh, can you see that? Let's do it a different way. The marginal benefit is going to be equal to the area of a triangle with a base of 8 and a height of 8. So it's going to be equal to 1 half 8 times 8. And the marginal damage is actually the same, right? Um, so the marginal damage of um, pollution is going to be equal to the level of pollution. So at a level of 8, it's going to be at an 8. Right? And that's true for both of our curves, both of our neighborhoods. So the marginal damage is going to be equal to uh, area, um, a triangle with that also has the area of a triangle with the base of 8 and a height of 8. So we don't even really need to calculate it because if we look at the marginal benefit minus the marginal damage, they're the same, and so we're going to have a total social welfare of zero. The benefit to the firm is canceled out by the cost to society. 
sorry, I'm still fidgeting with it, trying to make it better. So in this case, the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal damage. So we can answer our questions and say, okay, what are our questions? We wanted to know what's P bar one is equal to eight, P star one is equal to four, social surplus, at P bar is equal to zero. And we're gonna see the same thing over here, right? So if we go and look over here, we're gonna see that we have a marginal benefit of area two is gonna be equal to uh, this triangle with a height of four and a base of four. The area of a triangle is one half base times height, or one half of four times four. Um, the marginal damage also has a base of four and a height of four, so the marginal damage. We're going to have an area of one half, four times four. Um, marginal benefit minus marginal damage is going to give us a total social surplus of zero. So we get our answers down here. P bar two is equal to four. P star two is equal to two. And the social surplus at P bar is equal to zero. Cool. Now that we have the socially optimal levels of pollution and the social surplus achieved at P bar, uh, we want to talk about why the um, pollution levels are different in the two neighborhoods. Basically, it's because the marginal benefit curves are different, right? This firm had a marginal benefit curve of M E equals 4 minus P. So the cost associated with pollution abatement for them, limiting pollution, is a lot lower. They're a cleaner firm, and so it's just easier for them to reduce pollution. So they're going to have a lower social optimum um, associated with that. They're going to be polluting less, and so it's going to be causing less damage, and um, they're just starting off in a better position in terms of reducing the pollution. The social surplus, however, is the same in both cases, and that's a function of the marginal damage curve and the marginal benefit curve. Does that kind of make sense? If not, let me know. Okay, so now we want to find the social welfare in both neighborhoods at P star. So that is going to be basically now at P star, if we go back to our sort of simplified version where I'm going to draw on my beautiful graphs and not care. So we've got area A, just like in the book, area C, area E, and area F. And if we look at the marginal benefit minus the marginal damage, the marginal benefit is going to be Uh, the benefit to the firm of producing, so that's going to be areas A plus C, and the damage associated with polluting at this level is going to be area C, right? That's the damage remaining. And so what we get here now at this level is a net benefit or a net change in a net uh, social welfare of area A. So that's what we have to calculate. We have to calculate the area of this triangle because that's the benefit um, to society of polluting at level P star. And that's kind of what I was trying to get at in the lecture is this idea that, you know, Firms are people too, but you know that there is a cost associated with reducing pollution. And so we want to consider those costs just as much as we consider the costs associated with pollution damage. So to answer our question over here, the social surplus at P star is going to be equal to the area of the triangle that has a base of eight and a height of four. So one half of eight times four or, um, it's going to have an area of 16. 
So let's put that in there. Social surplus at P star for area one is 16. For the social welfare for neighborhood two at P star is going to be equal to one half of a triangle with a base of four and a height of two. So one half of four times two is one half of eight is four. So our social welfare is four. And so even on its own, that's a good thing, right? Now we've moved from having no improvement in social welfare, um, no net welfare at all, to having a net welfare that is positive. And so that's good, right? So that's the first half of this problem. Um, the second half of the problem says to put the two communities together and find how, what would happen if there was a um, common pollution standard. So basically a common pollution standard, if we haven't gotten to that point yet in the lecture, is a standard that um, is shared for multiple polluters. And the idea here is that, okay, clearly we have two different farms with two different marginal benefits, two different P stars, but we can't go around and make um, independent pollution standards for every farm. There'd be huge information costs associated with that, regulatory costs, etc. So to cut down on those information costs, regulatory costs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we could set a common pollution standard. Um, looking for the right color. Let's try it. And it's going to be uh, the common pollution standard restricts pollution from any factory to a maximum value of three units, which means we're going to let this firm over pollute and we're going to force this firm to under pollute. But it's going to come at a cost uh, or at a savings for us as a society in terms of information costs, etc. And so what you want to do under this standard is um, figure out how much each company, each firm pollutes, and then find the social surplus at these values, and then comment on whether the pollution standard is useful or not. How does the pollution, the common standard, compare with separate pollution standards um, and with the case of the government not intervening at all? And so, you know, spoiler alert, we're going to see that the choice of not having any standard is the worst. Obviously, it's nice to have um, individualized pollution standards, but the reality is that there is an information cost. If we ignore those information costs, then the common standard is not ideal. And if we start to consider those information costs, especially if those information costs are quite high, then we might think that a common standard is beneficial. Okay, that's it for me. Let me know what you think. Um, hit up the discussion boards on Canvas. Uh, email me. Uh, come to Zoom, download Zoom, let me know if you get sick, let me know if you're not well, let me know if you're having a hard time. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Thank you.